I'm so not perfect But every day I'm learning Striving and searching To be a better person I'm tired of my life I'm tired of the pain I'm tired of my past The guilt and the shame I am sure that you hear my heart's desires I've been to the limit and to the fire Lord, I wanna be See, I'm a believer, or do they disagree? Can they see that I'm trying with all that I have? I want to be in first place. I can keep on being last. I am sure that you hear my heart's desire. Through the fire Yet another episode, a new episode on the JesusGirl.ent podcast. My name is Shaniqua Robinson, and I will be your host. And so to Spotify for Podcasters, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, 
Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, as well as every other streaming platform, podcast streaming platform that's allowing us to stream. Thank you so much for allowing us to stream on your platform. To those of you who are tuning in, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on today. And to you who said prayers, um, love offerings, donations, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful for the love. And so you guys, it is a Freedom Friday, and I'm so excited to be with you all today. I pray you all are having an amazing new year thus far. It is January 12th already. So this year is moving forward. And I pray that the blessings of the Lord has been upon you as well as your loved ones, your households, your businesses, your ministries, and you're seeing the fruit of your labor in this new year. And so today we're going to be talking from the topic of deal or no deal. And so we're going to be taking a text coming from The book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read verses one through 11. And so um, one thing I want to say before we get into the text is that I have been seeing and hearing from some people that their year has not been going well already. And the only thing that can lead me to believe is that you didn't properly prepare to come into this year. And so I want to encourage you that you can stop that course of action. And you have to firstly start with the shift in your mindset and even the words that you speak. The Bible tells us that the power of life in death lies in our tongue. And so if you don't want this year to look like last year, then make some declarations. And then in addition to that, apply the action, the works so that you can see the manifestation of God's glory in this year. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, it is God's will to bless you. He said in third John and two, that beloved, I wish above all things, all things, everything that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, why did he have to include soul? God is not so much concerned about you prospering outwardly with finances and um, and lavish uh, clothing and, and housing and vehicles if your soul is at stake. And so he'd rather withhold that financial blessing and wait for you to get you get get your inward get inwardly together before he bestows those things upon you. Why? Because what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose their soul? God is concerned about the nature of your soul. And that's why when we come on, we do Soulful Soul Care Sundays. We we take a text. We, we take a text on Freedom Fridays. And then on Soulful Soul Care Sundays, we just kind of have a kickback to just speak about some of those things that we don't necessarily get an opportunity to speak about. And so today, we're going to talk from the topic of deal or no deal because when as God is elevating many of us, There are going to be some offers that you're not going to be able to accept. There are going to be some things that the enemy is going to try to present to you and he's going to try to package it and make it seem like it is God. And you're going to have to have discernment to know this is not of God. And just like that game show where they give you an option. Do you want to take this suitcase or you want to pick another option? You're going to have to say no deal so that you can receive all of the good things that God has in store for you. And so let us pray. Hallelujah. Dear most gracious father, how we thank you and we praise you for being God and God all by yourself. Father, it is only because of your grace and your mercies that we have not been consumed and for that we say thank you father right now in the name of jesus we come setting up a prayer of repentance father if we said anything if we thought any thought if we did anything that was not in accordance to your word or your will for our life father we repent of it right now in the name of jesus and god as we repent of these things we pray that you give us a heart of compassion to forgive those who sinned against us father i pray for this podcast service god that you move by your spirit like never before that you touch heal and deliver father that you minister unto your people god mend the brokenhearted god ease the troubled mind father even bring forth restoration to the hopes of your people on today. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise that is so do you. Father, have thine own way, even in this moment. God, in Jesus' name, we do seal this prayer. Hallelujah and amen. And so, um, people of God, um, as, as I was sharing previously, as God begins to take us up higher, there are some things that we're going to have to be declined. And so in this season, you know how they have that little slogan, being thirsty. You can't be thirsty and just take every offer that comes your way. Because just like God has bestowed this, this powerful gift or maybe you're multi-gifted um, upon you, not only do, do the people of God see it and, and honor it, but there are also some that may be used of the enemy that are in 
in the world that are not being used by God that will try to uh, manipulate it. And so you got to be so careful to guard and cover what it is that God has entrusted with entrusted you with. And we have a great example of how that's supposed to be taken, how that's supposed to take place here in the life of Jesus Christ. And so it, and it reads from Matthew chapter four, verses one through 11. Um, we're going to be, begin at verse one. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now I need to make note that this temptation and this wilderness experience is taking place right after he has been baptized um, by John the Baptist. And God has made this, uh, God has opened up the heavens and made a declaration concerning him that this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. So thinking not strange that as soon as you have a, a mighty encounter with God, a word is released over your life, the temptation comes because it's come to test to see if that word is true concerning you. Amen. Okay, let's keep on reading. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. Now, when it be count, when it when it pertains to fasting, there really needs to be a lot of um, knowledge um, applied to this area because a lot of people are doing this kind of like a trend. Oh, we're fasting, we're fasting. However, um, if you're fasting and you're not spending time consecrating yourself unto God, if you're just doing it to lose weight, if you're doing it for public accolades, then you're fasting in vain. And so, if we want the kind of fast that produces power, the kind of fast that re- produces results, we got to do a fast that is honored by God. And so, it's not those fasts that you do to try to make yourself seem extra deep, like telling people I've been fasting for this long or those fasts that you do so that you can meet your weight loss goal. But the purpose of fasting is to crucify your flesh because the flesh has desires that oftentimes than not more often than not are not pleasing in the sight of God and to build yourself up in the spirit, man. And so when these temptations that we previously spoke about present themselves, if you have been fasting for real, for real fasting, then you'll be able to resist Resist the enemy, just like the book of James says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil and he will flee. You'll be able to resist him because you're built up in the spirit, man. So you can tell your flesh no. But if you ever see a person where it's like they have no kind of resistance, they have no type of restraint. It's because this is a person, not necessarily a wicked person, but they're undisciplined. And so fasting releases discipline. And so because he has been fasting four days, 40 days and 40 nights, he his flesh is now hungry. And so let's see how he's able to respond due to the fact that we know that he is the living word and that he is God himself in the flesh. And this is our template of how we'll be able to overcome the temptations that come our way as well. All right. Verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God. So the first thing that he tried to challenge was who it was that God called for him to be. And so in this season, if you do not have a revelation of who you are, this is where you need to really be applying pressure and prayer and the word of God and God's presence so that he can reveal unto you your identity. Because one of the major plots of the enemy is to attack you in the area of your identity. And so if you don't know who you are, you leave space for anyone to put in any kind of label on you. I, I remember there's a, uh, there was a person that revealed unto me that when they were born at, at birth, their mother did not give them a name, a first name. They only had a last name. And all of the time that I had known this person, I had been calling them their name. And, and then they finally revealed to me as well as others. It was a group of us together. You know, I don't, you know, my mom didn't give me a f- first name. And so we kind of laughed about it. And I even went a little further and said, you, your mother didn't give you a name. We could call you any name. We don't even have to call you the name that we've been calling you. We could put any name right there. And so we laughed about it and laughed it off and we continued um, with friendship. However, that is how it is when you don't know who you are. You leave space for anyone to call you anything and you respond to it. And that was a great speaker that once said that it's not what they call you, it's what you respond to. But if you don't know who you are, you'll respond to anything. This is the reason when you watch the movie Roots that um, Kuta Kente fought so hard for his name because his name had power. And there was uh, his parents had given him that name and he understood what 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 the meaning of his name was. And so if you don't have an assurance of who it is that you are in God, you allow anybody to call you anything. And so the first attack that came against Jesus Christ here in the text was the attack on his identity. 
And so he said, if the enemy says, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And so not only did he attack him in the area of his identity, he tried to cause him to break covenant. And so whenever you have, you ever found that when you're trying to make an agreement to God, you made a vow to God and you're trying to really um, be faithful to that. Like, God, I'm making a commitment. I'm not going to do this. I'm making a commitment. I want to do this, that this is when the enemy comes and brings the most um, greatest temptation. And, and you heard what the text said. He was hungry. So in your most vulnerable state, in your most weakest hour is when that temptation presents itself because it's coming to try to get you to break covenant. But because Jesus wasn't just doing uh, fasting where he was crucifying his flesh, but he was built up in the spirit, man. He was able to resist. And let's see how he resists. Verse four. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Whenever you've been fasting accurately and the way that God is pleased, you won't respond out of your flesh. And this is something that God has truly been dealing, has dealt with me in the area of is how to respond in a way that will be pleasing in the sight of God. Because when people attack you with fleshly ways and words and rumors and all different kinds of things, it's sometimes challenging not to respond in your flesh. But just like Jesus told Peter when he went to go and cut the, sir, the soldier's ear off when they were trying to seize Jesus and proceed with the crucifixion after Jesus had restored the soldier's ear, he said, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And so I'm treat I'm teaching you a, a better way, a more excellent way, a more disciplined way. And it's not going to always be easy. He goes further to tell him if I wanted to retaliate, I could pray to the father and he would send me more than 12 legions of angels. So it's not that I couldn't handle this the way that you all would prefer for me to handle this. But because I'm disciplined, I'm making a dis discipline. The word disciple is a root word for discipline. And so the fruit of who you truly are, because the Bible tells us you'll know them by their fruit is revealed by your discipline. Have you been discipled by Jesus Christ? Can you love those who hate you and pray for those who despitefully use you? That's what these trials are for. We're in the season and time. Can God trust you with trouble? Leadership 101 hashtag. Let us see Jesus. Can we see him exemplify the life that you live? Or are you always the one who got to tell him, tell him, bang, bang, shoot, shoot, get him, get him, get him, get him. God said, vengeance shall be mine. I shall repay. Now, I am not speaking as if you you should not address what there is that God would have for you to address. But make sure God is having you to address it. Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's a time for silence and there's a time to speak. And if it's this, this is your season to speak up and speak out. Just make sure that you're responding in the spirit so that heaven can back you up. Amen. All right, let's keep on reading. And so because he was unsuccessful and Jesus resp responded with the word, he comes with the next temptation. Verse five, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, attacking him in the area of his identity again or challenging his identity, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And so just from reading this, it is clear that the enemy knows the word of God as well. However, how you'll be able to discern if this is of God, if this is from the enemy, is asking yourself if this is rooted in purity. There's a, um, I'm going to read it real quick, James chapter 3, if you guys can go there really, really quick. We're going to come right back. James, because we want to back everything up that we say with the word of God. James chapter three, and we'll read verses 15 through 17. And it reads from the King James Version. This wisdom, wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. For where, er where envying and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. I said 17, but we stopped it at 18. And so that is how you're going to be able to discern and know the difference. Oh, 
holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Behold!